will cause for that ratio rising. Now, what that's given us is anarchy, and thank you, it's not the your sex pistols that gave us anarchy, it's Maggie Thatcher. Because that's just taking a longer look here. There was no trend in the level of private debt from 1880 to 1980. Which was, I was not expecting to see that in the data. That was a surprise. Again, that's the Bank of England data. Then Maggie Thatcher gets in power. The real uh, factor I think people have explained to me in terms of institutional changes that occurred under her control uh, was the ab abolishing, let, letting banks get involved in lending for housing. I've forgotten what the act was, particular act was called, but in 1982, you might, might know Henry. Okay. But there's a particular deregulation at that stage. The banks could lend for housing, and I think that's what gave us the beginning of the bubble, plus, of course, the whole, the big bang, the whole deregulation of finance. And look at this change. We went from a debt level of 55% of GDP up to 120% under her, a bit of a slump, which is what let uh, Blair take over, and Blair did the same thing. And then we peaked at the level of debt of about 190% of GDP. It's since fallen to 160. It's now rising again. Let's look at the economics of that. Because a fundamental argument I make, and it's taken me a long time to work out the logic properly and to start persuading my fellow post-Keynesians on this, credit is part of aggregate demand. Expenditure is both on the, based on the turnover of existing money plus credit. And that then becomes income as well as capital gains for other people. So I do the correlation here. You look at the credit level, which is the, the red line, graphed on the right-hand side. If you go back to the uh, 1950s, it was between minus three. Actually, it was negative a few times for, for the UK. But generally, between certainly below 10% of GDP every year. And there's no correlation. In fact, the correlation here is the wrong sign, inverted commas, the wrong sign I'm arguing credit drives unemployment. Because the debt level was so low back then and there was no trend, there was actually a positive correlation, not a causation at all, just that other factors dominated over the role of credit. Once we got past the stage of that deregulation, you can start seeing how strong the correlation is. I've turned the unemployment rate upside down, by the way. It's zero here and 12 here to show you the strength of the correlation once we get this totally financialised economy. And a reason, one reason why the employment rate is recovering right now is credit is growing once more in the UK. House prices all the way through. That's looking at the, again, I've done the, this is the mathematical argument I've be publishing with Paul Omer and when I finally pull my finger out and do the historical part of getting our literature survey done. Uh, we've done Granger causality on this for the United States. Much to my amazement, Granger causality confirmed their argument because Granger causality is a very linear approach and this is very non-linear dynamics. But fundamentally, change in mortgage, change in new mortgages causes change in house prices. So it's actually caused the level of house prices is the amount of money we let people borrow to buy them. We have to control that to get away from the financial crisis we're in. And uh, 